Good evening and welcome to the Senate Committee on Judiciary meeting of Tuesday, January 23rd. We do have a quorum, so our committee is called to order. Um, with that, we have three pieces of legislation before us on the um, committee agenda for hearing our consideration. As has continued to be the practice for this committee, uh, when we do take testimony, I ask that folks limit their testimony to three minutes. Our uh, committee clerk will keep time for us. Um, before we move to the bills that have uh, folks signed up to testify, we're gonna start with um, Senator Raptakis has a marriage solemnization bill. I'd entertain a motion for passage for Senate Bill 2099, moved by Senator Lamont and seconded by Second. Senator Tacoyan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And Senate, Senate Bill 2099 is advanced to the floor. Next up, we're going to do Senate Bill 2137. This is uh, legislation from Senator Quesada. This is legislation that we passed last year, the Comprehensive Police Relationship Act of 2015. And um, we do have a couple folks signed up to testify. Um, Steve Brown, Jeremy Costa, and Bella Robinson. If anyone wants to come forward to provide testimony, I see we have Steve. Welcome to the first uh, Judiciary Committee of 2024. You're our first witness this year, Steve. Oh. I'm honored. Thank you very much. And uh, Happy New Year to all the members of the committee. It's good to be back. Um, I'm here to express uh, the ACLU's strong support for this legislation. As the chair noted, this is uh, the same legislation you passed last year, and we hope it will be received favorably again. Um, it's the result of a lot of work, a lot of compromise, a lot of meetings with uh, uh, Senate uh, and, and other people. And it's, it's really important. What it does is it reinstates a law that expired, uh, sunsetted in 2020, uh, requiring the collection of traffic stop data uh, to analyze it for uh, racial disparities. Um, the Rhode Island, Rhode Island was the first state in the country to adopt a law like this back in 2000. Um, unfortunately, it's now lagging behind because the law lapsed in 2020 um, and there's been no formal uh, data analysis, uh, even though we understand the police departments have continued to collect the data even without um, passage of, of the law. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions, but I hope that uh, you all appreciate the, the purpose behind the bill, the fact that it was in existence for uh, almost two decades before it sunsetted uh, will be sufficient for you to, uh, to get it back on the road, uh, if, as it were, uh, with passing the bill. And I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for the witness? All right. I don't see any. Welcome to the committee. Should I testify for both the bills, since there's only two? Because I signed up for both. If you'd like, yeah. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Bella Robinson. Thank you for hearing my testimony. I'm the executive director of Coyote RI, which is a grassroots group of sex workers, sex trafficking survivors, and formerly incarcerated women. Um, I totally in support of S2137 for all the reasons that uh, Steve Brown just mentioned. And I'm asking you to hold... Um, S2096 over for further study. So we, we have several issues with it. You know, we're, we're trying to create more trust between the community and law enforcement. And when we see language like minor violations for departmental rules and regulations, they're very vague terms. You know, would this include excessive force, sexual harassment with civilians, or officers who engage in sexual conduct during prostitution investigations? These are valid questions. We have emailed our charging document report to every member of the General Assembly three times in the last two months, where law enforcement admits to engaging in sexual conduct during prostitution stings, which we consider state-sponsored rape. We also noticed the 14-day the suspension um, doesn't seem like much because in the real world, if I do misconduct on the job, I might get a warning the first time. The second time, I'm going to be fired. The 180 days with pay um, seems to be what the norm has always been. And I remember a few years ago, we had a Portsmouth lieutenant that was arrested for domestic violence. He pled no contest to a simple assault. 
Um, and they allowed him to keep his gun, even though we have a law that they are to remove their guns. He was allowed access to his guns during working hours. I, uh, we also have concerns that only um, the governor and the Senate Speaker, uh, the, the Senate President, the Speaker of the House, are going to get this annual report. And we think this annual report should be ongoing, uh, recent, maybe monthly or quarterly, and it should be provided to the general public. And the last thing we want to know about misconduct is this only going to um, deal with misconduct that is uh, reported by a civilian, or are they going to investigate all misconduct within law enforcement? So again, we're asking you to hold this over for further study, and we hope you would consider to support H71982 to totally repeal Leobor. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions or comments for this witness? All right. I don't see any. Mr. Costa, welcome back. Yes. Welcome. I am... Uh appreciate you guys um, getting right to the business. I really appreciate you getting right to the issues. Um, so we're going to start off with S2137. Um, as again, I want you guys to understand, this is a good bill, but this is not a way to circumvent, uh, you know, Leobor. And I feel like, you know, last year this was a way to kind of circumvent from the real issues. So, you know, if we pass this bill, I want to make sure that we pass a decertification bill as well. There are bills that, you know, you're trying to break the Leobor down, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, I'm sure. But, you know, if we're going to pass this bill, we need to pass all of them at the same time. We can't just pick and choose which ones are acceptable for law enforcement and which ones are not. You know, unification Mr. Rap Packus is important. Uniformity in law enforcement and criminal code is important through the United States government. We need to get it together. 29 states, we are the outlier in decertification. We need to get it together. This is a great bill. This is a great start. So let's continue. Thank you. We're going to have a great year this year. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments for the witness? All right, I don't see any. Thank you so much. Um, with that, that does conclude the testimony on Senate Bill 2137. I'd entertain a motion to pass. Moved by Senator Lamont and seconded by Senator Basalian. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And Senate Bill 2137 advances to the floor. Uh, next up, we have Senate Bill 2096. This is Senate President Ruggiero's bill. This bill is the culmination of numerous years of work, including a Senate study commission, multiple negotiations, meetings, and conversations over many, many years. Um, this is identical to the bill that the Senate passed uh, through this committee and through the floor last year. We had unanimous uh, committee passage last year and near unanimous floor support as well. Um, with that, um, we do have a number of folks who are signed up to testify, so we'll do the public testimony. Um, we have John Donnelly, uh, John Rossi, and Stephen Brown up first. Welcome to the committee. You can go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Donnelly, I'm the state president of the Fraternal Order of Police. Um, as you mentioned, sorry. oh sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, as you mentioned, uh, it's been uh, many years of trying to uh, work something out. Uh, the FOP is not against reforming Leobor. Uh The problem that we see with this particular bill in the Senate are there's two things that we would be against. One of them being uh, allowing a domestic nonprofit involved in police discipline. We're not aware of any other profession where there is a, I hate to say random, but there's a unaffiliated domestic nonprofit involved in disciplining their members. I don't know that the teachers would uh, support having a nonprofit involved in their discipline or the firefighters, etc. So we have a couple of questions if this were to take effect. One of them being, uh, what if the nonprofit dissolves? What if both organizations or members of the organization are unavailable. Um, involving civilians in the panel, uh, particularly those outside the legal profession, creates some challenges such as we would need to provide expert witnesses to explain use of force situations, other kind of 
unique situations that are specific to law enforcement. Uh, police have a required body of knowledge to uh, understand what another police officer is held to. Um, we don't impose increasing suspension days. We don't impose a database. We don't impose expanding the panel. We just have um, issues with including unaffiliated civilians from nonprofits involved in police discipline. Uh, the other issue that I saw from reading the bill is posting the status of pending hearings. I understand if I don't, I'm not opposed, or our group's not opposed, if there is a uh, resolution to the panel, if there's an exoneration or a termination or a suspension upheld to post that. Posting the status of the pending hearings with names of witnesses and um, defendants, etc. That that I kind of have a problem with. So, um, my opinion: if the chief follows the law, builds a case for termination, and using evidence, the officer will probably get fired. I think the termination rate, as it is now, is somewhere around ninety percent. Uh, that doesn't mean we, we expect it certainly to go up if the panel were to expand, but. Uh, I don't think any chief is afraid of the Bill of Rights. I don't think they're handcuffed by the Bill of Rights. I don't necessarily think that they are employing police officers that they don't want to have on their job. And for those reasons, we would oppose this bill. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments for the witness? All right. Thank you, Mr. Rossi. I guess I'm on. Hi, my name's John Rossi. I'm the national representative for the International Brotherhood of Police Officers. We represent the rank and file police officers uh, in 26 out of 39 cities and towns. Um, and I want to thank the chairwoman and the committee for an opportunity, um, a first opportunity to weigh in on this bill and how it potentially affects my members, um, our members. Um, we've, I've also submitted written testimony um, and I'll try to be as brief as possible. I think it's pretty important to distinguish what I believe Leobor is and what it isn't. So it's a law that governs the methodology used to discipline police officers by chiefs of police and chief executive officers of municipalities, in which those police officers are employed in the guidelines used to investigate violations of department rules and regulations. It is a law that governs management labor relationships and in, this in the framework of a paramilitary organization that utilizes a plethora of rules and regulations to manage their respective departments. The giant book that all the police officers have to live by. I'd like to uh, point out to the committee that the sign up process uh, is a binary process, so I had to sign up for a post. Uh, it's more that I have some concerns with the bill. Um, this bill uh, does address things that my organization has been committed to, which is an expansion of the panel, an increase in summary punishment, and the ability for the chiefs to openly communicate about um, investigations uh, involving police officers. A um, couple of the concerns, uh, I went through the entire bill. Um, we think it's great to have uh, for the certified officers pool um, that there's training. We would rec we would respectfully request that that training uh, be done by a, a institute of higher education that's accredited by the state of Rhode Island. Uh, as I said, we are uh, in favor of expansion of the panel, um, and we're in favor of using the certified pool of officers. Uh, we think that if this is a labor management bill that disciplines um, officers, that the um, person um, other than the, uh, the, the judge that's expanded on the panel should be also someone who's legally trained. Um, we also respectfully request that the um, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court make the ra random picks instead of the um, public safety director. The critics of the law, um, and maybe even rightfully so, say that uh, the problem with the current law is that it's from law enforcement, among law enforcement, to do with law enforcement. We think removing the law enforcement component for making the random picks uh, addresses that issue. Um, 
We're also, as I said, in favor of expanding, uh, having the chief been able to approve uh, the the chief speak about uh, cases that involve public interest. We would respectfully suggest that maybe before any statements were issued that an approval from the attorney general uh, would be garnered. Please um, wrap up and finish your final thoughts. Sure. My final thoughts are that we are we have some concerns about the bill. Thank you very much. And uh, as I said, we're committed to expansion of the panel, uh, summary punishment being increased, um, and the chief's ability to speak freely about stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments for the witness? All right. Seeing none, Steve, welcome back. Uh, thank you again. Stephen Brown on behalf of the ACLU of Rhode Island. Uh, we, too, have submitted fairly detailed testimony that I would encourage you to read. Uh, we think there are some very good things in this bill, uh, including the elimination of the so-called gag rule, uh, preventing police chiefs from talking about uh, ongoing disciplinary matters, uh, the expansion of time for summary uh, suspensions, um, and uh, the website posting of, of Leobor proceedings. Um, but there are also things that we think that should be there that are missing. Uh, we're concerned that uh, this version uh, continues to have a majority of police officers uh, as opposed to other members of the public, which some of the earlier versions from last year uh, had. Um, we've talked previously about the importance of um, tying um, transparency and accountability in Leobor with uh, the Access to Public Records Act to make sure that the public has access to disciplinary information that flows out of proceedings that are not Leobor proceedings. Um, and we also uh, have um, submitted in our written testimony some suggestions for some minor language changes, but minor in that could be important. One in particular I just want to mention is in the gag rule um, language, it talks about police chiefs being able to release video evidence, suggesting that there's no other evidence that they could um, release, and so we encourage an, a, a simple amendment to say video or other evidence. So we have a few minor suggestions like that that we would also ask you to consider. Um, we understand that this is a very contentious topic. Um, uh, clearly, a lot of work has gone into this, um, but we hope you'll give some consideration to some of the other suggestions that we've proposed in our testimony. Uh, with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments for this witness? All right. Thank you so much. Um, and Madam Clerk, uh, Senator McKinney would like to be recognized in the affirmative on the two votes that he missed. Um, and then uh, Senator Acosta, I apologize for uh, not seeing you. And if you want to come forward and provide your testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, members of the committee. It is usually an honor and sometimes uh, a a burden to be the chair of the Rhode Island Black, Latino, Indigenous, and Asian American Pacific Islander Caucus. And the reason why I say that is because I'm used to speaking quite forcefully and assertively, and today I actually have to present a pretty ambiguous position on behalf of my colleagues. As you may know, the caucus currently stands at 21 members, 14 in the House, 7 in the Senate. We're about 18% of both chambers. And we have not come to a consensus on this particular issue. While we take no stance on the bill in front of you today, what we do take a stance against is the status quo. We are not happy with the way that Leobor currently operates. And every single member would like to see something change. The degree of that change is what we are currently debating. By my count, there are at least four bills at play. The one in front of you right now, sponsored by our Senate President, a bill with full repeal, sponsored by Senator Mack, a bill that will be introduced this very afternoon by Rep. Batista and a potential fourth bill that has been floated by Rep. Hull. And so I want to give a shout out to Joe Messino, our policy person here in the Senate, um, who is helping prepare a document that allows us as a caucus to compare and contrast what these bills do. The things that the caucus demands or would like to see are a bill that addresses the structural bias introduced by the very composition of the board, something that has been mentioned here. It is probably no surprise that people, and in in some ways, pun intended, are not great at policing themselves. And the current composition of the board uh, introduces that bias, and the current version of the bill doesn't go quite far enough for many of my colleagues. Second thing we'd like to see is a bill that separates kind of ticky-tacky allegations against members of law enforcement from the more egregious or serious concerns. Right now, those are all lumped into the same process. It is believed by the current bill that the changing of the suspension dates will address some of that. 
Another thing we'd like to see is the formalization of a reporting structure. And so that has been mentioned here. That is to some degree incorporated in this bill. And we're watching what the other bills do. So what I can say is that while the present bill does some of the things that the caucus would like to see, it doesn't do so necessarily to the degree that all the members would like to see. As I said before, what we can say is that we'd like to see something done, and we hope in the next few weeks, once we have time to study the other bills on the table, to come out with a more formal position. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Are there any comments or questions for the Senator? All right, seeing none, thank you. All right, next up we have Jeremy Costa, Bell Bella Robinson, and Michael Tillinghast. Oh, I apologize, but Bella, I, I, thank you. Um, and Harrison Tuttle? Mr. Costa, welcome back. Yes, again, my name is Jeremy. Yes, forgot. I'm going to be here quite often. And, um, again, <clears throat> I'm going to be here quite often. And I'm glad that, um, you know, the person that introduced the bill is not here today. Because if he was, I'd probably rip it up. But I'm not going to do that today. I think Mr. Acosta spoke very well of the position of the indigenous black community that I would definitely be representing in this conversation. Again, this bill has been, we, you know, three years that I've been actively, you know, we've, we've been trying to get this done. Three years. That's number one. Number two is, again, 29 states. We're talking about uniformity in every other bill when it comes to prosecution. But not for officers. So that is very important that we address that issue in this term, in this session. So there are also things in regards to... Um, and. The five panel. There is no way that the people that are inflicting harm on the community get to administer the relief. They don't get to do that. They don't get to choose how we administer, how, they, how the relief is administered. They don't get to, who, who is on a panel that gets to pick and choose who, they, like, hold, hold on a second. What 12 people get to judge a person that is their peers? What 12 people have legal training? I'm trying to figure that out. We don't, we don't need anybody that has legal training. We want people that are afflicted, people that see this. We don't need any judges on, on the panel. We definitely don't need police officers. That's a bias. That creates a conflict of interest. I don't even, the conflict of interest category in, in, in this bill, it needs to be ripped up completely. So we also need to make sure that we have access to public records immediately. There, there needs to be transparency, and we're not getting that in this bill. So I oppose it completely, 100%. If we don't have something that is going to favor the people, like three to two, then it's not even, it, 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 it shouldn't even come up in front of us this year. Please, don't waste our time. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments for the witness? All right. Thank you, Mr. Costa. Mr. Tilling asked. Welcome. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the next session. Um, so whether I support this bill or oppose this bill, I definitely support repealing the uh, Leobor entirely a lot more. However, I would support it if you if you voted yes on this bill. Nonprofits and the public. Um, have been trying these groups have been trying to get you know more transparency into these hearings um, These things should be entirely public. They shouldn't be behind closed doors They should be entirely public the governor and the police chief should have you know the authority to do that what the to make the decisions that they need to and you know Leobor really prevents that um, So I've talked to everyone about this uh, Leobor bill um, you know, there's problems with paying people continuously after they've been disciplined there's problems with um, you know transparency and I like the fact that this bill um, says that nothing in this bill shall be construed to prevent you know releasing evidence and information that that is a huge step that people have been advocating for for a long time um, you know it changes need to be made to the pay um, 
Yeah. Um, training is important. There's another bill um, elsewhere that would increase firearms training um, that I hope that you all support and can pass this session. Um, but, you know, training, the public doesn't even understand this bill. So they're training law enforcement officers on it, but they should be, you know, training people on it and, you know, explaining to people why this bill doesn't make sense at, at all. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I think. And I would totally support it if you pass this bill today. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments for the witness? All right. I don't see any. Mr. Tuttle, welcome. Thank you so much. Um, honored to be here testifying on such an important issue. Um, really thought it was pretty profound, the different perspectives to hear it all in kind of a span of, of this hearing. Um, so, you know, we had a lot of people from legislators to um, uh, Stephen Brown with the ACLU to people in the community who came out. And I, I want to expand on that as a community organization and BLMRI PAC that I myself have dealt personally with individuals who mean a lot to me, who have gone through this process, who I've got to know through different individuals. And I think it's important to mention their name because, you know, when these individuals go through these high profile Leobor cases, their lives are completely changed. The, the amount of emotional and physical trauma that they go through um, and the experiences that they have gone through and I've had conversations over the phone with, particularly around the feeling of hopelessness and not being able to know throughout the entire process whether or not they're gonna be able to get information on when their next hearing is or whether or not there is going to be someone who is going to reach out to them and let them know that a Leobor hearing to begin with has concluded. Um, so all of these things, I think, are incredibly important, but I think it underpins the severity behind why we're really talking about Leobor itself, which is the fact that we continue to see time in and time again, and it's not just a Rhode Island issue, it's a nationwide issue, but we continue to see police brutality. And Leobor is a system that has been put in place to reflect accountability when officers do something wrong. But until we actually sit down and address why police officers at a disproportionate rate are continuing to arrest and sometimes hurt low-income black and brown individuals, then it really doesn't matter how we shake out Leobor because at the end of the day, the community is never gonna buy in to the process if they always feel like they're being targeted all the time. And they always feel like they don't have the information available to them when people in their community are affected by it. And I know there are a lot of processes in which, you know, ticky tack people don't wear their hat and maybe that's something that, you know, we need to explore when it comes to separating it. But the things that really bother me, the things that affect people in my community, are when you have people like Jennifer Work, kids that are getting shot in the arm, and then that officer gets to make deals while I have to listen to a crying mom and a kid who doesn't feel like he's welcome in this world, to officers like Sergeant Hanley who are gaming the system three years who still haven't received a Leobor trial, that's what bothers me. Please finish your final thoughts. And so any, any testimony, any changes to Leobor, if it's not addressing the people that are actually most impacted by it, then it's, it's, just, it's just word salad. Because I don't want to be back here again having to deal with the same issues that we have the last three years. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments for this witness? All right, I don't see any. Thank you so much. Um, Madam Clerk, I believe the Senate President, Majority Leader, and Whip would like to be recorded in the affirmative on any votes that they missed. And with that, Mr. President, uh, do you have a motion? Uh, yes, I do, Madam Chair. I would like to move passage of the legislation. Do I have a second? Seconded by Senator Lombardi, Senator Burke, Senator LaMountain, Akoyan, Basilian, uh, Leader Pearson, uh, Whip Lawson, uh, Senator McKinney. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? And Senate Bill 2096 advances to the floor. And with that, uh, Senator. Chair, may I be recorded? Uh, I, I know you uh, had a piece of legislation earlier. May I be recorded as being in the affirmative on that legislation, please? Yes, absolutely. Um, the clerk will mark that down. And with that, that does conclude the business before us this evening. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn, moved by Senator Lamont and seconded by Senator Quinn. All those in favor? Aye. And we are adjourned.